Hello, everybody. Nina Soden here. And today I want to talk about Pretty Little Dead Girls. It is by Mercedes M. Yardley. I hope I'm saying that right. Yardley. Beautiful cover. Look at that. Neat. All right. So I'm not sure this is really my cup of tea. I'm not sure that I really got into this one as much as I know so many people did because I looked at the Amazon reviews after reading this book and it has an amazing review. So I know people really enjoyed this book. It was not really my cup of tea. But let me read this to you. So this is the back of the book cover. Run, Stargirl. Briani Adams is destined to be murdered. But fortunately, fate has terrible marksmanship. In order to survive, she must run as far and as fast as she can. After arriving in Seattle, Briani befriends a tortured musician, a market fish thrower, and a starry-eyed hero who is secretly a serial killer, bent on fulfilling Briani's dark destiny. Mercedes M. Yardley's Pretty Little Dead Girls, a novel of murder and whimsy, is a dark, lovely fairy tale with lyrical language and a high body count, and features a cover by Hugo, award winner Galen Dara. There we go. It is absolutely a beautiful cover. Um, so, the title, Pretty Little Dead Girls, caught me. I loved it. I got this from a friend and I absolutely love the cover and I thought, yep, I can read that. Sounds very intriguing. Destined to die, destined to be murdered. I wanted to know more. But I, like I said, I believe I'm in the minority when it comes to this book. I've seen the Amazon reviews and she has an average of five star reviews with 82 reviews, which is Awesome. I would love to get 82 reviews on my books. As an author, that's amazing. Um, but the narrative style of this book just didn't really speak to me, I guess. Um, or maybe it isn't the narration. Maybe it's more that every character seemed to have the same voice. But I'll talk about that more later when I talk about character. All right, so the writing of this. I've never really read anything like it. It is unique and it is whimsical and it is lyrical, just like it says. Um, and it's intriguing, I guess. Um, like I said, it's written from a narrative point of view instead of just, instead of standing outside of the story and telling what happens, this narrator actually speaks to the reader, like addresses the reader many times throughout the book. And it's a little bit jarring, at least it was for me. Um, all right, the story, right from the start, from the very first sentence, I was intrigued. So the first sentence is, Brianni Adams was the type of girl who got murdered. The type of girl who got murdered. Now, I don't know about you, but that kind of sparked something very um, distinct in my brain. What type of girl do I think is going to get murdered? And I'll be honest, I'm thinking somebody who's out on the street all the time. I'm thinking somebody not in a very good, you know, safe line of work. But it's never really explained why Briani is the type of girl who is destined to get murdered. We're told she's the type of girl to get murdered like a ton of times throughout the book, constantly over and over. But right from the start, from that first sentence, you ask the question, why? Why is she destined to get murdered? And that question is never really answered for the reader. And I think that that really bothered me, that it was constantly brought up that it was constantly said that she's the type of girl to get murdered. And everybody knew it. Anybody that looked at her knew she's the type of girl to get murdered. But nowhere in the book did it explain why everybody felt that way, how everybody knew it. 
or anything like that. It didn't answer that question. And that really bothered me. So I think that that's the part of the story that just kind of didn't get resolved for me, causing me to give this book a slightly lower rating than I think I normally would have. Okay. So I do believe that the potential was there for this to be a really amazing story, but it kind of fell flat for me because one, it didn't answer that major question. And two, again, the narration for me was a little bit jarring at times. All right. Characters, everybody seemed to have the same voice. And I think this is more to do with the fact that it was coming from the narrator's perspective, but it kind of bothered me. Um, and one of the main, main points where I can show this is there was one example is there was a conversation that took place between Briani, our lead character, and the murderer, the one who is destined or believes he is destined to kill Briani, to murder Briani. And she's been attacked. Okay, spoiler alert. <laughs> I may give something away here. So if you don't like spoilers, stop the video right now. Um, but she's attacked at one point by another murderer, an amateur murderer. And our lead murderer, the one destined to kill her, finds her being attacked. And they share this entire conversation just through eye contact. And the way it is narrated to me was so absurd or so ridiculous. It's like her eyes said, please help me. And my eyes told her, are you all right? And her eyes said, I've tried everything, even the moves that Ricky Ticky taught me to defend myself, but they haven't worked. And my eyes answered, Ricky Ticky, what a weird name or something like that. And her eyes said, well, his real name is blah, blah, blah. And not a conversation you could really have with your eyes. And so for me, it just wasn't realistic. And I enjoy books that in some level, on some level, are realistic. I read a lot of supernatural fiction. Not really realistic to say vampires and werewolves and all of that, which I also write. They're not, you know, realistic like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to go down the road and see a vampire. But you can still fall into the world and believe what you're reading at least for enjoyment purposes. And with this, the way it was narrated, I just couldn't fall into the flow of the language and read it as if it were actually being spoken. So that bothered me. The cover, beautiful. It's uh, very intriguing, very interesting. I wanted to read it based on the cover. And I do judge a book by its cover, only to the point where if I really like the cover, I don't even need to read the back of the book in order to want to read it. But yeah, that's my opinion. There's a beautiful cover. My favorite quote from this is, again, that first sentence, Brianni Adams was the type of girl who got murdered. First sentence of the book, super intriguing, sucks you right in. The rest of the story just kind of fell flat for me after that. So I did finish it. I couldn't put it down. So something was going on that's right. Or maybe I'm just stubborn and I won't put down a book before I finished it. But Pretty Little Dead Girls definitely had potential. It just didn't quite make it for me. If you have read this book, I would love your thoughts. If you have not and you want to read it and you do read it, comment below and let me know what your thoughts are once you have read it. Otherwise... Happy reading and enjoy your next good read.